Hi folks. Stick of 01 tool steel and a similar size three quarter inch stick of W1 tool steel in the lathe. Let's cut up some slugs. We're going to machine them then into our Versa grips from last week's Wednesday widget, heat treat them, and then use our little hardness tester to see how hard they got. And most importantly, see if they work for what we want on our Versa grips. W1 is gonna be that one, a water quench. O1 is gonna be an oil quench. I don't know how this is gonna work fun, but hopefully uh, we'll have some fun here. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Running pretty slow, 100 surface feet per minute, uh, both on the facing, which I'm not too worried about, and the parting, which is a little bit tougher to do. Although actually, really, not that hard. And that's kind of what I'm excited to see about on this video is, you know, it's tool steel, but we can machine it, we can work with it. Look, uh, great, I mean, it's wet from oil, but great finish. Now let's try the O1, which is gonna be harder to machine. Anytime we get in tool steel or stuff that I consider special or expensive, I make it a habit of writing on it. You can't trust the color codes, you know, writing on it W1 or having some organization system as best possible because if you lose track of what it is, uh, it becomes almost worthless. I really should redo this window. I wish there was something I could, uh, easy way to buy a replacement for it. Something that didn't scratch or get so nasty. Well, that sounds great. Look at that chip forming. Not breaking, which is not good, but, um, whew. That was actually much easier than I expected. So now we got to keep them separate. Because that's half the battle here today, is seeing how the O1 and the W1 perform. And I will say that actually is a little bit warmer. That's not that, pulling it out. All right, here we go. We happen to have uh, from one of our training classes. So we offer hands-on CNC training. And on our hands-on three-day class, we actually make two parts. One of them is a speed vice handle. And you're just looking at the soft jaws uh, that every student makes to uh, make the speed vice handle. And the end of it just happened to have a, I'm nervous about the cut depth here and the holding power. Let's see. So far, so good. Um, uh, too much. Just because it's a pre precarious soft jaw, I'm gonna skim that off a little first. Um, Okay, that's much better. You know, this isn't the, really the right tool. Uh, with this larger radius uh, cutter in a single flute, it's sort of an interrupted cut that's beating it, which is not necessarily the best thing for the soft jaws I'm using. Uh, something like a quarter inch end mill with four flutes is going to have a much a less, um, much smoother cutting operation, but the Superfly kit is such a good finish. But really, there's no, the service finish isn't driving this requirement. I just love it. Um, and you can see where, ah, it'd be hard to show you. We are making a nice chip, even though this is really slow. Uh, yeah, good. One ninety drill. I was kind of curious. It looks like it's drilling fine. I don't think the tool steels are too hard to drill. We've been drilling some three ho four lately with Lakeshore carbide carbide drills, and it's like it's so easy. I cannot believe it. Uh, I was really freaked out about it. I do want to make sure. 
that went through. It did awesome. 3 16 end mill. Speaking of Lakeshore, obviously this is a Lakeshore. So interpolating out the pocket for the cap screw, and then we'll come around and cut the four and five inch, um, four and five inch radius, or diameter, I keep saying radius, uh, for the VersaGrip fun function of this guy. And you know, the, this isn't the best for video, um, but I'm choking up on the tool, why? Because it matters, choke up. This is a short tool from Lakeshore, because at the end of the day, normally I'm not cutting a super long length of cut with a 3 16 four flute tool, and it matters. It's so much more rigid, and you'll get better cut quality, you'll get better surface finish, you'll get better tool life, better tolerances. It's just perfect. I think I forgot to check up. No, no engagement feed rate. So this is the W1. We're gonna do the O1 next and see if it's any different or harder to cut. The W1 is the free machining version of the tool steel. So, um, you know, it's what I'd love to use because it's easy to quench. You just need water. I think you actually put some salt in it, like a brine solution. Oh yeah, because if you don't put salt in it, the water will boil right around your part, which will create a, ooh, correct me if I'm wrong, like an oxygen layer, or basically it won't heat treat evenly because there's air or there's not liquid quenching it all around, so the salt helps. Um, What's interesting though is I sent out a job, uh, sent out a job shop job for uh, a pretty large order, and they really didn't want to do it in W1. I got the sense that you know they they run O1 all the time, and I don't know whether um, maybe W1 is more expensive in quantity or uh, I was kind of anybody know why W1 is if it's true that it's less popular why so? We're going really conservative here, 1800 RPMs. I wish. I was asking Tormach to put in the surface feet per minute in Path Pilot. It'd be nice to see. Uh, and six inches a minute, 6.6. .6. But, you know, four foot end mill, maintaining a good chip load per tooth, no big deal. I'm actually excited to see how the uh, diamond drag tool, which I really love, one of my favorite tools, uh, you know, this guy right here. I'm curious to see if it scores the um, end mill very well, the tool steel at all. Here's a cleanup contour. Only 100 thou tall, so we're not holding on by a ton uh, when we go to use these Versa grips. We could make we could make a new set that are taller. We could make them all taller, though. I don't think there's any real constraint there, which I like. It's engraved. You're supposed to turn the spindle off. Right now, Fusion can't do that, so I have an S1, which will give me an error, but it'll still run the program. So let's hit stop. Um, let's edit our G code file. Edit G code, and I can scroll to hit Control F to find T90. Okay, so I need to delete this line here. So just select it, delete it, hit Save, close this out. Okay. Now the problem is, ignore that error. Now the problem is, I need to scroll all the way down, which can be a real problem. Check this out. <laughs> find T90. Nope, not that one. Next one. Now I can right click above it, the trace two, set start line, boom. Oh, that's beautiful. That is awesome. So I got a four inch diameter and a five inch diameter Versa grip. I was actually thinking with some of the smaller ones, I might be able to get four edges, four radii diameters per, which would be sweet. Love it. Here we're using the 2D. Ooh, I'm gonna cut the jaw off. No. Oh yeah, barely catching it. That's a little more than I wanted, darn it. Well, that's just the floor. I'll have to look at my settings there. But I love it. It's using the 2D chamfer cam feature in Fusion 360, which automatically detects solid model and adjusts how far around it can get the chamfer without having the shoulder of the tool you know, uh, violate or gouge into your model. All I want to check is to make sure my cap screw fits. Ooh, look at that, it does. Now this one's got the goof from our first Superfly, so you can see that uh, 
lines there, which I bet you the next one won't have. I think they look pretty damn good, though. I'll tell you, card here to uh, our video on organization. I am not kidding you when I say that it helps us make better parts. Because nobody wants to make bad parts. Nobody wants to make lazy parts. But, and that ticks me off. Darn it. Uh, one of the guys took those. That is a shop rule. These do not leave. Um, and at the end of the day, every tool goes back. Because nobody minds doing this. What you mind doing is looking for the damn tool and you can't find it. I don't know why I just swore twice in a row either, by the way. Um, and you literally make better parts because you use the right tool with no hesitation. You're more efficient. It makes you happier. I love it. Now, these haven't been heat treated yet, but let's still just see what they look like. I pop one in. Actually, take the screw out first. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I swore it fit when we tested it. Oh, you know what? I bet it raised a hair, just a hair of a burr. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm catching it on my fingernail. Let me go. I'm going to go just very gently hit it on the scotch Bright wheel. I'll be right back. scotch Bright at that edge just broke it down. Those scotch Bright wheels are phenomenal. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I don't know if I tap my hole deep enough, though, for this, at least this cap screw that I've got on hand. All right, let's make the W01 one now. I decked it by just jogging and path pilot because Fusion was pushing that big face mill all the way past the part. This is ridiculous. Like it's a one example, a rare example of, in my opinion, but it, nevertheless, where it's not worth the time in cam to fix it. Um, and it's so easy to do that by hand. Uh, just don't worry about it. Most of the time, it's funny, this conversation keeps coming up with people who, and I don't get it, who, who think conversational uh, is quicker and it's funny because I just think even if it were the same speed or even a little quicker like it's on the machine it's not at your computer how do you save files for projects and clients and what if you want to use it you know in six months or a year uh, just I don't get it we use conversation on the late I'll give you that for quickie stuff but man this uh, one is cutting like totally fine not a big deal at all. You can see here, we're making a real chip. I think that's, that's just something I want to keep emphasizing. Um, don't rub, don't, you know, with a steel like this, I'm going to go at slow surface footage a minute. Um, so I'm going to take it easy in that respect, but I'm still going to keep my chip load. I think here it's a thousand per tooth. funny, remember back in the Fusion Friday where I was talking about six ways to make a hole? Actually, I think the first thing we filmed on the Haas, and I was trying to show the faceting that you get from adaptive strategies. Here, you can see it. You can see there's three distinct facets from that adaptive, which is fine, because the contour comes in, cleans her up. I could have done a much more aggressive width of cut here. I, you know, no big deal. Uh, if I, I'm going to make some more of these in the different sizes. That's actually what I'm really excited about, having one inch and two inch and ten inch in a little drawer but um I'll, I'll probably increase that step over because they can clearly the tool can handle it the machine can handle it the fixture can handle it the workpiece can handle it uh that's kind of the checklist you want to go through and think but it's always better it's always more fun to start with something that works even if you guys are impatient or thinking oh my god go, go faster i'd much rather start with something that works and build up than do something that uh you know, rips the part on this soft jaw, which would ruin the soft jaws, and then you've got to spend an hour, you know, fixing that or dealing with that. Maybe not an hour, but you know what I mean. I do want to make sure this is a little, yeah, that's a lot looser, which is good. I'm super tickled. I really didn't think that the uh, diamond drag tool would would work as well. And it's rotating. Let's see if it looks any different. You're not supposed to rotate it, I don't think. Oh yeah, it looks terrible. Okay, well, at least we'll now more easily even know which one was the O one. I think it's uh, worse partly just because there's some run out.
God, that's beautiful. Having like a five foul edge brake chamfer is just sexy. It looks so good. I actually had the wrong um, Y zero. I did it between, great example, the, the operator error. I assumed that the jaws uh, were centered. Well, how do I say it? I assumed that the circle was centered in the soft jaws in Y. It wasn't. That's why the chamfer on the W11 is wrong. So I just did the Heimer front to back on the workpiece uh, and fixed it. But yeah, that was stupid. I, I didn't, uh, no reason to have made that mistake. Make no assumptions, right? Testing audio. Remember how I just said make no assumptions? Uh, this O1, I tested the W1 when we were making the soft jaws last week. I didn't test the W1 in, or the O1. And guess what? The O1 is about three or four tenths bigger OD. So the bad news is, you know, what was a great fit for the piece of W1 is just too tight or snug for the O1. Now, I'm gonna make another set of these, so maybe I'll just make that one a little bit bigger, and it's not gonna, or, you know, I hate to turn it down, because it's not gonna, you can see it's oh so close. There, there it goes in, but boy, um, I couldn't get it out. I had to do this, which I hate doing, because they, especially because they aren't hardened yet. Let's heat treat. We'll start with the W1 piece. So what do we need? A great book, highly recommended, link in the video description. Uh, William Bryson, Heat Treat, Selection Application Tool Seals. I like this book because it's actually fun to read. I swear to God, the guy has a sense of humor. Phenomenal book. Tabletop, kiln, these things are about $500. We've had a lot of luck with it. I am not a heat treater. Sending stuff out to get heat treated is very inexpensive. We use Peter's Heat Treat, I think a, a it's like 70 bucks or something, and that, that fits, a, that's for a batch, and that fits a lot. So absolutely, heat treat is a science that I am not going to do a perfect job of today. I like the, the fact that we can do something quickly. We can try, we can test. I like having that ability. By all means, when, you re, when, when it counts, send it out. But for 500 bucks, it has a programmable PID, awesome. We need some table salt to uh, soak for our O1 or for our W1 uh, in the water bath. I like having a big bucket. It's not going to tip over. And I, once we're done, uh, or once we're ready to quench, I can get my hand in there. I can really agitate it. Tongue blade to stir it. Uh, and then when I do heat treat, you want to think through uh, what everything that's going to happen, and you want to practice it. So what I'm planning on doing is I've got just a piece of 1024 rod. I'm gonna set this, actually we can do this right now. We can set it on here. It doesn't have to be tight. Now I suspect, uh, well, uh, I don't know that the having the hardware is going to affect um, the heat treat, but it might affect the quench, but I don't really care as much about the two faces. Um, I care more about hardening this, the uh, side right here. So I think this would be okay. I don't have a stainless steel uh, foil bag. I wish I did. So we're gonna set it in though like this. Um, so this oven is going to be really, really, really hot. We're going to open the door. Oh, actually, I'll grab my TIG gloves. I'm going to stick my hand in here with these vice grips. I'm going to carefully but confidently grab it, come over with my eyes on, and agitate it in the bucket. We're good. Uh, that feels pretty good to me. I just need to grab my gloves. So what we want to do, according to the book, is a preheat cycle of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, 650 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Then we want to bump it up to 1425 Fahrenheit, 775C, uh, which is the austenizing, austen, austenizing, I hope I said that correctly, temperature for W1, and then soak that at that temp for five minutes per inch of the smallest cross section. So really, I'm just going to do five minutes because the smallest cross section is actually uh, smaller than this. Then we quench it in the water that has a 10% brine solution. It's imp um, then it's incredibly important, life or death, that we then uh, temper right away when the part reaches about 125 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is still too hot to touch, but close to being able to touch, um, I believe. And um, 
then you want to temper it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175C for two hours per inch. So we'll do it for an hour and a half or so. And we're off. So while that thing is, is warming up and doing its soak and then heat treat, we will mix in, you know, I don't know how important the 10% is for the salt. Uh, what the book talks about though, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, water should contain 10% salt as a brine solution. Salt coats the parts while they're being quenched to aid in the reduction of scale and give more hardness. Uh, the, the water near the part is actually boiling. The surface, although it looks ground or smooth, has a rough view under magnification and that has a layer of decarb, blah, blah, blah. So that's what it helps with. I wish, and maybe I'll pick some up later, you get some of these little foil bags, which would be a way to keep the oxygen out of the heat treat oven. Um, the other way you could do this is a heat treat in a vacuum, which I think is probably how a lot of the big shops do it. Um, so these parts may get some scale on it, which won't make them look, it won't, they won't look good. Um, they may also change the um, tolerances. And darn it, I just realized I didn't measure this one. Um, we'll do that on the O1 part though, shoot. So I've got this bucket full to about here. I'm just gonna put it, I don't know that salt's cheap, I'm not sure. If I'm gonna err, I'd probably err a little bit heavy. You know, 10%, I'm sure it's not 10% salt to liquid. I wouldn't think so, that seems, well, maybe it is. You'll notice too, we're doing this in a, a place where it's well ventilated. When you do get this oven and you start using it, you do need to do a burnout and it does stink. Uh, we did that outside. Um, but basically the way I think about this is if a fire started right here, um, that's not good, but I don't have anything flammable near it. It's on a steel table. Um, I could get a fire extinguisher, which is nearby, or I could call the fire department. You know, just kind of think about it. It's not on top of a wooden or plastic bench, and it's not in a place where it's gonna tip over or hurt somebody, so forth. Um, probably not a bad idea to move the, in fact, I will move the um, quench bucket onto the ground. That way it doesn't, you know, if something happens, I don't knock that whole thing off. Oh, and then I forgot to mention earlier, and I caught it when I was reading my instructions, which is to practice everything, because remember, when you're done quenching, it goes right into our temper cycle, which is our old, uh, our old powder coat oven. It's just 350 degrees, so super easy to do that. And that's one of the problems with heat treating is you really need two ovens, because most of the time, you need to do a quench right away, and your oven takes way too long to cool off to get to the temper cycle. We're just about done. Uh, you probably aren't, you're not supposed to, I think, open the oven, but because this is a fun video, let's take a look. And this door does still get hot. I've just got on a pair of TIG gloves. Whoop, cool, yep. Um, in fact, one of the instructions is to take a look to make sure the part matches the color of the oven. So yeah, so the green is the program temp and the red is actual temp. So it's pretty darn cool how it um, uses the PID to program your ramps, soaks, and uh, to make sure it targets the correct temperature. Seriously, for 500 bucks, you know, most of the stuff we heat treat is smaller than my fist anyway, so it fits in there. Let's rock and roll. Okay, quick peek, what she looks like into the temper. Our O1 guy, uh, what do we say the diameter should be? Um, a few, like 7506, yeah. 7505, oh, okay, between, well, we're talking tenths here, so it's within two tenths diameter. Um, but seven, we're gonna call it 7504, 7505, and then, the shoulder is supposed to be 100 thou, so what's our overall part? Should be 400 or close. Uh, yeah, four thou, three and a half thou under. Um, so three, nine, five, six. This should be two, nine, five, six then, am I thinking correctly? Two, nine, Five eight, yep.
There she is. Put her in the uh, temper. So our um, W1 has been in there for about an hour. We'll leave this guy in for two. Uh, you probably, you need an, uh, two hours per inch, so you could probably get by with only one hour total, but you can't, as I understand it, over temper. So we're just gonna leave them in for a couple hours. All right, they cooled off from the quench. Uh, let's see here, the water hardening. Let's look at her first. Way more uh, scale or discoloration than I was expecting. Uh, I think again that's because I don't have any vacuum or well, just the contamination for the oxygen. So I was just kind of curious, does a piece of scotch Brite do much? Not really. Okay, well, so here's the before. That took her off. Sweet. Yucky. Whoa, that oil is way messier. So that really is like a scale. You can see it kind of chipped off uh, almost. Ooh. Seems like the acetone has a little bit more impact on that scale. That could be misreading that it may just flake off this is the light duty scotch bright too i could go get a heavier pad oh yeah that cleaned it up look at that okay i don't think that's uh, this isn't changing the tolerance so i'm okay doing this before we measure in fact i probably want that scale off there because the scale probably added to it this whole scotch bright wheel actually worked really well just by hand uh, getting it cleaned up. So 7505 was our, well here we'll check the uh, shoulder was supposed to be 296 or so. Yeah, so no change there. Great, 2958 was actually literally what I'd written down. 396 for overall height. Now I'm spot checking, so this doesn't necessarily mean the part didn't warp. 3966, yeah, 3959, a tenth or so. You know, there's some differences depending on where you measure here, um, but that doesn't change. Let's check the overall diameter. That's interesting, that did change. 751, I don't think I got 751. I got 7505, but I checked it a few spots. Maybe that's some scale. Well, here, we're talking a few tenths at most. Um, I wonder. Yeah, no, I'm going to say that. Uh, I'm tempted to go hit it on the scotch Brite wheel and see, because that's certainly not much if it, if it did move on us. Okay, let's see how hard they are. So the way this thing works is you use this tool here with the light flashlight to measure the size of a dimple. And the bigger the dimple, the ooh, softer the material, I believe. And it comes with this piece here, which is basically a calibration probe. Um, how do you make the dimple? With their own center punch. With, it's got a hardened ball in it. Um, and so we've got a control piece. So I've got a piece of W1 and a piece of O1 that we didn't harden. So we'll take a look at those first. Actually, I need to do the dimple on the other side because you got to have it resting like this. Okay, so there's the dot. So I'm looking, I think, it's actually amazing. I wish I could... I'll see if I can get the camera in on this thing. I doubt I can. Um, I'm gonna do that again. I don't like my dimple spot because it's right near the center tip. There we go, that's much better actually. Everything's backwards when you look through it, which makes it really tough. Okay, this is pretty crystal clear. And I'm gonna say that that is 40 Rockwell. Uh, harder than I thought. Let me catch the bottom edge of that thing again between 35 and 40. So now let's try this thing. Now 
Now that's cool. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but uh, oh wow, 65 according to this. That's awesome. Um, actually harder. The dimple's a little smaller. This only goes up to 65. How accurate is this? Uh, I think it's probably plus or minus three Rockwell pretty comfortably. Uh, it's probably not as good as those larger drop ones, but they're a couple thousand dollars. And the advantage to this thing is it's portable, which I don't really care about it being portable so much. Uh, I guess that's nice as it is just, yeah, I can stick it in my drawer. It's not a whole other machine I've got to deal with. Um, let's try the O1 piece though. Now uh, we're gonna stick a file on these two and just see the, uh, just see how that hardness checks out. This file skips over them. Okay, so this is the annealed or regular just from McMaster as it ships. Interesting, this, the O1 does look a lot different underneath the microscope, holy cow. Oh man, everything's backwards, it makes it so hard. Okay. Yep, 35, for sure 35 on this one. Wow, I didn't do much at all. 60, basically the same size. Something like 65, 70 Rockwell. This thing doesn't go past 65, so I don't know if it loses its accuracy. Um, let me just do my, look at the calibration thing again. So it says right here, 51.7 um, on all of these. Yeah, that checks out. So I think that's exciting because we saw a change. You know, this heat treating may not be perfect, and I would love to know if the foil bags would help the scaling, but it worked. We doubled the hardness. You can do this at home. That's awesome. Let's try a scribe and a file to see if we can mar that stuff up, and then we'll put them to use. I actually need to film another video on making a riser plate for our trunnion on the fifth axis, so that's where we'll put these things to use the first try. Let's take a look at the file. So annealed uh, W1. This is not a perfect file either, but you can see, it would focus, how I scratched that up with the file and how, uh, ooh, hard to hold on to it, sorry. There we go. You can see I'm rolling the edge there. Ha ha ha, that's awesome. Can you hear it? It literally skates over it. You can't come close. That's, that's awesome. Nope. I remember when I was first looking at CNC machines. Oh, that's so cool. Somebody had, a, somebody had a hardened ball screw, and the guy said, you can take a file and go to town on that thing. And I'm like, this is incredibly expensive. Like, no, no way. He's like, no, do it. And I remember sitting there wailing on it with a file. Couldn't touch it. That's what this feels like. Nope, just skips right over it. No matter what I do, there isn't a single thing biting into it. I, I assume the same thing's going to be true for the uh, Pisa 01. So yeah, no problem getting a bite, bite out of it and into the corner. Yeah, skips right over it. A little edge there I'm getting a bite on, that's interesting. Um, oh, that might just be some scale or the lettering. I think it's the scale. It has a little bit of bite somewhere yeah, no, it's not, because I'm like, I feel like it's biting, but I'm not actually bite getting anything out of that edge. Folks, I hope you enjoyed. Stick around. Please click subscribe. Uh, we will be back in a, probably a week to machine this riser plate for the trunnion. Uh, otherwise, take care. See you soon.